What's going on guys? Welcome to part 46 of the Rick and Morty app series. It's been a while since I've done a part, so thanks for all y'all patience. Before we jump into things, uh, drop a comment down below, hit like, it actually really helps. It actually also lets me know if you want to continue the series. I got a lot of comments, so here I am. Definitely want to finish this out, but let's let's get to it. So I did a quick refresher of where we are in the project. Let me just give this a build and run so we can take a look together. We were working on search previously, particularly getting a search request built after we select some of these options and printing out the URL in our console down here. Now, the next thing that we want to do prior to actually showing the results here is we're not taking the input out of this search field. I believe if I'm not mistaken in our search view model, what we're doing is we are actually hard coding the search text right here uh, and execute search. And instead of doing that, we want to read this from the input field uh, and hang on to this in the view model. So let's let's get to it. So cool. So we have a uh, RM search view, if I'm not mistaken. And once again, if you uh, don't know how to open this window, it's super handy. Command shift O lets you search and open any file throughout your project. And it's honestly used a ton, uh, especially in large projects. So inside of here, we have a search input view and the search input view is actually what hangs on to the UI search bar, which is this guy up here. So we want to do one of two things. So when I am typing in here, you can see on the keyboard, we actually have a search button with the UI search bar. Uh, and then we also have uh, to handle cases where let's say I just like typed in something random here and then I hit this and then I selected that. And then I hit the search button at the top right, right? Because when I hit it at the top right, that should also execute a search, which I don't think it's doing at the moment. Let's hit that search button again. Let me see if I get a print. Okay, cool. It is. So. We need to handle all the permutations of this, so let's get to it. So I'm gonna totally wing this, I could do all my videos. So we're gonna learn about it together and see what the best way to do it is. So the UI search bar, similar to UI text field, does have a delegate. And the first thought that comes to mind is, um, we are holding a view model on here, which is our RM search input view view model. Um, and what I'm curious to know is where I'm actually configuring this. If I'm configuring it here in our RM search view, that makes our life easier because we can leverage its delegate to kick off the actual, um, you know, hanging on to of the text in the field. But let me see where it is. So this guy I'm setting a bunch of constraints on and it looks like I am not configuring its view model anywhere here. So uh, I actually am, I see it right here. So search input view, configure with this view model. Okay, so that makes sense. And we're also setting a delegate on it. So let's, let's see what the best way to go about doing this is. So when I put something in our view model, in theory, we should trigger a delegate call before making it correct. Let's just use the delegate directly. So let me jump back into our RM search input view dot Swift. And inside of here, let me also document this because I always forget what the heck this file is, is a view for top part of search screen with search bar. Now let's extend it. So here we already have a delegate here. So we have uh, did select option. I'm going to copy and paste this function and we'll tweak it here. So same input view argument and we're going to say uh, did change search text and here this will be of text and it's going to be string optional because text property on a US search bar is optional if I'm not mistaken. And what I will do is we will leverage the delegate here. So let's come down to the constructor and we will say, uh, let's do it at the bottom here. The delegate will be self and it's gonna yell at me if I try to compile because we do need to conform here. So let's see where these curlies end. So let me copy this RM search view thing because we're gonna add a uh, extension onto it. So I'll say extension onto this guy. UI search bar delegate and nobody can remember all the methods in the delegate. So we're going to cheat like the rest of the world and take a look at what's on here. So there is search bar should begin editing. That's cool. There's text did begin. There should be something like text did change this guy right here. So text did change uh, and then it actually gives you the search text. This is exactly what we want. And then I think there's also something along the lines of um, did press search or something. 
right here, search bar, uh, search button clicked. So we actually want both of these and I'll explain momentarily why. Let me just add a marking here. And so here we want text did change, which should auto completes. And this one will be search button clicked. So in this case, we want to uh, execute a search. And in this one, we want to notify delegate of um, change in text, basically. And I guess that's what we want to do here, too. We don't want to execute the search directly. We want to notify that search button was tapped. So let's get to it. So we just added a delegate API for this case here. So we called it RM search view input view um, did change search text. So here we'll pass this. And in this case, this is the search text. Now I want to know before I pass this, if this is inclusive of the change that triggers this function or if this is without it. What I mean by that is if I have ABC typed in the field already and I press D, will search text be ABC or will it be ABCD? So to do that, we're gonna hand, use our handy uh, print statement here, give this a build and run, and it's yelling at me already, which is not good. Um, so it's saying search view does not conform to search input view delegate. That makes sense because we stuck a new function in here. So I'll just get that auto completed here and give this a run. Let's come over here. Let me expand my console. I'll hit Command K to clear it out and I'll start typing RIC. And I should have RIC is the latest one down here, which I indeed do, which is beautiful. It's exactly what I wanted to get out of there. And in this case, we also want to notify via our delegate that the uh, search button was tapped. So let's come down here, or up here, I should say. And I will change this uh, and I will change the API. We don't want a parameter in here. What rather we want is RM search input view did tap search keyboard button. And you guys guessed it already. We'll come up down here this time and just call that function passing itself. Once more, if we try to build, it'll yell because we're not conforming to that delegate that we extended a function on. And just as an FYI, we're back in our RM search view, which is the entire view that wraps this basic whole UI here, inclusive of the bottom where the search results will go and this top piece. So in here, what I will do is uh, simply add in that function. So RM search view, uh, input view, did tap keyboard search button. And what I want to actually do now in these implementations is pretty simple. We hold on to a reference of the view model uh, for the arm search view and this guy actually retains the api to execute the search so when you tap the search button that's pretty simple already so we can say uh, view model let me just fix that dot execute search and one more thing that i want to do in this delegate function when i tap on that search button we want to actually get rid of the keyboard so i can say on the search bar resign first responder, which is relevant to the responder chain. Um, think of it as what window is focused on your computer. So whatever you're kind of looking at, and that's why it actually gets rid of the keyboard. Um, a lot of people gloss over that and don't understand how it works. So I figured I'd call that out. Um, and in this case, this is pretty cool too. So because we have this view model here already, we can actually say something along the lines of like update search text or something. Um, I don't know if I added a function on that, on here for that, so let's let's take a quick peek. So we have a search text here, which is indeed private, makes sense. And we have some register search result uh, handler, okay. Don't really know what we're doing there. I think that's how we pass search results back. Execute search, makes sense. Okay, then we have a set query. Okay, so let's see if I'm calling this somewhere. I don't remember if I am. I don't think I am at the moment, but at least I had the foresight to write this function. So this is what we will be using. So in this case, we're gonna say uh, set uh, query, which I should have called text, but too late. So we will pass in our text here, and it dawns on me we actually don't need this to be optional because even back in this function, um, this inbound argument to the search bar delegate is not optional. So we can just drop it from our definition here as well. Now let's just try to build. And we should be good to go. Let me go back to our search um, view, view model. 
we don't need to hard code this here. Rather, what I'll do is um, let me print out search text and I'll just interpolate this. Make sure we are indeed getting it correct. Let's expand this here and we should have our search bar functionality working now. So if I come over here and I pop into here and it doesn't show the keyboard in the simulator because my MacBook's keyboard is connected, a uh, physical keyboard. So just an FYI. So here, if I type in Rick and Morty and on this keyboard, if I press search, we should both see our text here. The keyboard should go away. We should have some results. So cool, it's saying search uh, text is Rick and Morty. Uh, we did get a call to this, but we're getting nil now. And the reason we're getting nil is because, well, my um, guess here is we typed in text with spaces. And whenever we have spaces, we want to escape the string. So there is a way you can do that um, on the string directly. Um, but what'll happen is because uh, we're saying, you know, create this request with this URL and give me the absolute string back, it's not able to create it. So let's actually escape this string by saying search text. And instead of uh, redefining it, let me see, let's see if there's a better way to do it. Let me see where I toss this. And I think there's something along the lines of escaping strings or string by escaping percent something 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 so let's pop on over to google and we are going to say swift escape url string because i don't remember what it is and googling is perfectly fine um so let's come down here so swift 3 original string original string uh adding percent encoding with a lot of character set yes that's what we want so we're going to say adding percent uh, encoding with allowed characters and for here we're going to say url um, so this is going to be a url query allowed let's give this a run and let's try that again rick and morty we'll hit search here and let's see if we get a url we indeed do and this is the url we get back we get rick and morty api character and you can see now that the percents were properly encoded um, so yeah, let's take this URL and toss it into my browser and make sure it actually works. I don't know if there's a character with that name. I don't think there are. So let's actually try a different case. So let me come in here and type in just Morty and we're going to search up here this time. And this time we get, um, some results here. So we see the search text is indeed Morty. And it says we have uh, 20 results as well. So let's just verify here before we wrap up the video. We indeed do, which is awesome. So cool, we've got this part working where we can actually read in the text of this uh, search bar, not only when the user taps on the search button, but also kind of in real time uh, whenever a character changes. And you might be wondering why I set it up like that. Well, one reason is we have this uh, bar button item and we wanna handle what the search text is when that's tapped, but also, maybe in the future you want to change this experience and get rid of the search button and similar to kind of like google search or search autocomplete as the user is typing you can update the results now we're not going to do that here because that does require a lot more uh, implementation of like debouncing and setting up timers and uh, throttling your api calls but i did at least want to call that out so you you're you know you're creating your ui and model in a way that uh, it's conducive for various UXs. So that's all I've got in this part before jumping on over to part what I think will be 47. Drop a like down below. Again, throw a hello in the comments. Let me know if you're watching because, you know, if nobody wants to see these and I don't want to continue the series. But if you do, I certainly will. So appreciate it, y'all. Thanks for sticking through it all the way to this part. I will see you in the next one.